CataractCoach.com. Is this posted your sub capsule or, or posted your polar cataract? And how can you figure it out? Obviously, it makes a big difference the way you do the surgery. So starting off here, and you see there's that big central opacity on the posterior surface of the lens. Now, the really dark center part kind of looks like posterior polar. The rest that's kind of more diffuse and spread out maybe looks more like posterior subcapsular. So how can you tell? Well, oftentimes in posterior polar, it's a little bit more delineated or demarcated. It's a smaller, rounder spot that really has a hard edge between where it finishes and then the rest of the capsule. And in this one, while the very, very center does have kind of that appearance, Maybe it's more PSC than anything else. But the one thing that makes me pause is if you look in the very, very center, right where those Purkinje images are, there is that one central zone that's just really opaque. And that it does look very well demarcated. I know, the eyelashes are in the field and it's driving me nuts. I'm with you. Thanks for not saying anything. So, what are we going to do now? We've got to make the rexes here. So the patient, of course, is being nice and non-cooperative. That's okay. We can just hold the eye with the chopper. Let's get this rexus done. I definitely want a nice clean five millimeter rexus because as we know, if this is posterior polar and there is an issue with the posterior capsule, we may end up putting in a sulcus lens and getting an optic capture. So I'm measuring again. I'm getting a mental idea with those forceps. As you know, my forceps, the two marks are one is two and a half millimeters from the tip, the other is five from the tip. So I can figure out the exact diameter so I can get a nice five millimeter rexus. So I'm taking out my time here, going a little bit slowly here. Very deliberate, getting that nice round rex is beautifully sanded and make sure it's the exact size I want, which is basically five millimeters here. And so finishing this case up, and the question is, there's a five millimeter rex. Do you do hydro dissection or not? Now, as you know, posterior polar, Osher and Vasavra have published studies that show if you do a hydro dissection, a lot of times those cases you're going to break the capsule. So here I'm just going to try to do a delineation. See, I'm getting that endonucleus up. So I'm going to treat this like a posterior polar. And luckily, it's on a real dense cataract. So trying to just use that spatula or that 27-gauge cannula, just get that nucleus, the in, endonucleus, the inner nucleus up. So again, I did a hydro delineation, but no real hydro dissection. Not going with the phaco probe, we can just aspirate the central endonucleus down. Now take that down nice and easy. And then the key here is, let's look. If we can you know, get it out of the bag quickly, aspirate it down. It's not that dense. It's actually very soft. And then as, as soon as we get a glimpse, let's look back there. And how does the posterior capsule look? Do we see anything going on there? It looks pretty reasonable. So maybe this was mostly posterior subcapsular. So I'm even brave enough then to come out of the eye, not letting the AC collapse much, but sort of a little bit. Now let's go in with the IA probe and let's clean up. Now I'll clean up uh, most of this peripheral stuff first, and then obviously don't touch the posterior capsule centrally. Just wait. So you can see we did not do a hydro dissection, so we've got to spend a little bit more time here getting out that cortex that's a little more adherent to the capsule because we didn't do a hydro dissection. And so going around again, taking these pieces out, looks pretty reasonable. So I think we escaped. So perhaps it was posterior subcapsular. Now another good clue is look at the patient's other eye. Because by and large, I think posterior polar is almost always uh, bilateral. And both eyes have around the same degree of opacity there. And the slit lamp in the, in the clinic, you can really check by doing that red reflex and just looking for a really clean demarcation line. Also, if you have any old records, if you look back at the patient's old records from 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago, and there's still a mention of a posterior polar cataract or some sort of posterior cataract, then you know it's probably going to be polar. Right, because PSC cataracts, posterior subcapsular, they tend to start and progress pretty quickly. And in this case, that's really not what's going on here. So, that's cleaned up nicely. You know what? We're even going to pause the undersurface of the anterior capsule rim. What the heck, right? Let's do the whole kit and caboodle. So, polishing up the undersurface of that anterior capsule rim is pretty clean, though. Not really much going on there. And let's get the lens in. Now, in the lens, you have an option. You could put in a single piece of acrylic in the bag, which is what I'm going to do. But if you want to, you're supposed to do a three-piece lens. Because then you'll have more options just in case there's an issue with the capsule bag. So there's the lens going inside. That looks pretty good. And let's get that nicely um, opened up and positioned where we want it. And there you can see that it really is a 5 millimeter rexus. And it has a really nice overlap of the optic. And we get out of here pretty easily. And that even looks like an extended of the focus lens. So now going behind the optic to remove the viscoelastic. And here I set my parameters lower. So I just cut the flow in half, the vacuum in half. Because I don't want a lot of turbulence inside there as I take out 
the viscoelastic. And then here at the end, looks pretty darn clean. Again, nice overlap, beautifully positioned lens. And then when I come out here, I don't want the AC to collapse much. A uh, little bit's okay. Just quickly get the BSS cannon, like right about now, and then let's hydrate this up. So not too bad. So yeah, let me know. What are, you, what are your pros? If you have patients who have posterior polar versus uh, posterior subcapsular, how do you differentiate? What, do you, what are your secrets there? What are your pros? Let's learn from each other. Please post a comment in the section below. And thanks for watching.